walked in their shoes, but I asked them to slow down, to pump their brakes, to slow that train down that has left the station about the Vance County Sheriff Office, and definitely want to clear that the Henderson Police Department has nothing to do with this investigation whatsoever. This incident is clearly out in the county under the jurisdiction of the sheriff, which is myself and my, my uh, deputies and investigators. Uh, we invited the North Carolina Highway Patrol, correction, the North Carolina SBI to assist us in the investigation regarding perceptions and, and, and get clarity and to be transparent that the Vance County Sheriff's Department is not withholding anything and sharing information regarding to the descendant to, to the family. Is, is there an autopsy yet? An autopsy is being performed today, yes. Okay. And uh, also, you know, with regard to, you know, the rope maybe possibly being bought at Walmart, is that you, would you be able to release that surveillance video? Uh, once we compile the information that we have, uh, step by step, uh, talking to the district attorney, the local district attorney, and the SBI. We don't want to release too much information too soon because this is an ongoing investigation. And we just ask everybody to be patient and so we can do a thorough investigation to get the proper information out there and ask people to stay off social media and slow down and report the facts. As to, I understand there's over a thousand hits on TikTok. Uh, Peace and blessings, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, I'm Richard Taylor, and I'm coming back with some more information uh, regarding the Javion McGee case in Henderson, North Carolina. First of all, once again, I want to give honor and praise to God, because without him, of course, neither of us will be on the earth. Uh, secondly, I do want to offer once again uh, condolences and prayers and heartfelt uh, sympathies to the McGee family. Um, as you know, uh, as according to my live last night, uh, his mother did reach out on one of the videos and uh, she made a comment expressing her love for us and that her son didn't do it, uh, didn't die in vain. So, um, we are definitely thankful that she is paying attention to all that we are doing to kind of bring attention and awareness and kind of bring clarity, uh, to the situation of her son's death and, Third of all, I definitely like to thank you all, you know, you guys who have, you know, joined the channel, uh, begin to, to share the videos, uh, to call, share information, you know, just band together in solidarity um, to, you know, seek for justice. And as uh, the foundational scripture that we've been using for the past few days is Ephesians 5 and 11, take no thoughts in the works of darkness but rather expose them. So uh, we're going to expose them. We're going to conti uh, continue to expose them. But uh, as also Amos 5 and 24 says, and many people attribute this to Martin Luther King, which I've always did until I came across the scripture in the Bible. But Amos 5 and 24 says, let justice roll down like mighty waters and righteousness like a... Uh, mighty stream if i'm not saying let, let me check let me check because i don't want to give you all no fake scriptures let justice roll down like mighty waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream so that's what we want to do we want justice to roll down uh for the mcgee family and you know for anyone who's involved with this to pay but nevertheless make sure once again you like share and subscribe and, and and you know send this video out to people because we're going to be today we're going to address the letter or the announcement or the press release by the mayor of henderson north carolina and her name is this lady right here mrs melissa elliott now she is the first black female mayor of henderson now of course, you know, last night we kind of went in on uh, Sheriff Brain, who's the black sheriff of the area and what people are saying about him in the area. And we're also going to revisit his interview as well, because the first time I saw the interview was like a two or three minute clip. I didn't know it was a whole seven minute interview. So we're going to go over that interview and, you know, how certain things just seem a ride with his demeanor, uh, with his wording. Uh, he looks kind of nervous. Anytime you're talking to someone and you're looking down, um, that's a sign of dishonesty. If you see him interviewing the interviewing the guy, 
sometimes he looked the guy in the eye and then sometimes he looked down like this when he was talking to him. So um, I am a, you know, I am very, um, you know, I, I study people, you know, I study body language, I study psychology in school. So a um, couple of, we're, we're going to examine a couple of things uh, which stood out to me on that interview. But first, let's get to this press release. Uh, and I'm going to pull it up right here so you can see it. But before I pull it up, this press release was released September the 13th. And as we all know, Javion McGee was found on September the 11th. So this press release was released by the mayor two days after the discovery of Mr. McGee. And I don't know if this letter was released before Sheriff Brame's interview or after Sheriff Brame's interview. Was this the catalyst that made Sheriff Brown finally can, uh, come out after two days and, you know, several social media posts and address this situation? But it seems to me, and then I think the person who sent this to me, this press release, I was, was once again released on September the 13th. And I want you guys to read it with me because it once again feels like the mayor is calling for justice for uh, the family, right? So um, as you see right here, this press release is from the city of Henderson, from the office of the mayor, Mayor Melissa Elliott. And there you see her heading on there. For immediate release, statement of the mayor of Henderson, North Carolina, on the tragic death of J.B. on McGee. And you see here they did spell his name wrong, as a lot of people did at first. Henderson, North Carolina, it is with a heavy heart that I address the tragic and devastating loss of 21-year-old J.B. on McGee, a young professional truck driver from Chicago who was recently found deceased in Vance County. This matter is still under invest investigation by the Vance County Sheriff's Office in cooperation of the medical examiner's office. The discovery of his body has spurred immense public interest and concern from literally millions, millions of people across the nation, many of whom are questioning the circumstances surrounding his death. Now I'm going to stop here because there is something that uh, we must take note of in this letter. Uh, it says the matter is still under investigation by the Vance County Sheriff's Office in cooperation with the medical examiner's office. And if you know anything about these things happening and cover ups, sheriff offices do work in conjunction with medical chief examiner's office and, you know, coroners too. Uh, create narratives. Now, as you mentioned, this statement is hasn't was released two days after, as you will hear in the interview with Sheriff Brain when the interviewer asked him, "Where's the body at?" He said, "Well, it's at the, you know, medical examiner's office, right?" And so, a lot of times, things have been done to create narratives that are opposite of what happening once again i have to say not saying that this is what happened but you know we have to wonder again you know why and yeah and you'll hear chief uh sheriff brain stutter over some things regarding you know the autopsy and pictures and things like that which to me i don't i've never met the man so i don't know if he stutters regularly but to me his demeanor uh seems to me as someone who's being not totally forthcoming or, you know, outright deceitful. But let's continue. As the mayor of Henderson, I cannot ignore the pain, fear, and outrage that has been ignited, especially in a time of such political polarizations and deep division. The South carries a torrid racial history, and I understand the sensitivities of many who feel this tragic loss echoes the horrors of the past. We must confront this history while seeking justice and clarity in the present. Now, once again, uh, she mentions the, the the history of the South. And any time that someone's found in the position, in the manner in which Mr. McGee was found, 
it's going to automatically garner those sentiments that many of us feel that, you know, this was not self-inflicted. But nevertheless, we'll continue. First and foremost, my heart goes out to the family of J.B. McGee. As a mother of a black son, I can only imagine the depth of their sorrow. And my heart is broken alongside theirs. The loss of any child is unbearable. And this is a wound that no parent should have to carry. I have personally reached out to the family and offered my assistance when they arrive in our city. We stand ready to support them in any way possible as they navigate this devastating time. Now, the other mayor once again says that she's reached out to the family and she's offered her assistance. Now, if I'm not mistaken, the family did not get there uh, until, you know, maybe Friday or even that Monday, whenever they had that press conference uh, with, you know, those lawyers and they finally did get a chance to see uh, the body. Y'all guys tell me what, when, when did they come uh, in the comment so we can be clear on that. And the next statement is where the mayor once again sort of disavows or distances uh, the city and the police department from uh, the investigation. It is important to clarify that this investigation falls under the jurisdiction of the Vance County Sheriff's Office. The city of Henderson, Chief Marcus Barrow, and the Henderson Police Department are not involved in the investigation. I want to reassure our community that I am closely monitoring the situation and will remain con in contact with both the family and the authorities to ensure transparency and focus on the last word and justice. And that is what the person pointed out to me in uh, that send it. Why would the mayor be seeking justice if this wasn't a matter that justice needed to be sought in, right? If the narrative is, you know, he harmed himself, then there would be no need for justice, right? Or transparency, like, you know, so it's evident that, you know, this mayor possibly knows something that contradicts the narrative that, you know, as Sheriff Brain says, oh, no evidence of foul play. How do you know? And and, and I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself, but if you watch the video, they, 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 they ask him, is there no evidence of foul play? He quickly said, no, no, no. And so the guy asked him, well, you know, how many times was the rope wrapped around um, the location of the body? And he was like, well, I, I, don't, I, don't, I didn't really pay close attention. So that's a contradictory statement, but we're going to revisit that. I just jumped ahead of myself real quick. But watch, he mentioned justice about three more times. Uh, in this moment of grief, I can call on our community to show compassion and respect. Let us not jump to conclusions, but rather seek truth and healing together. Javion's life mattered and we mourn with this family. We will walk with them in their pain and seek justice and peace as we move forward. Once again, she wants to seek justice. And she also advises us not to jump to conclusions but seek truth. That's what we are doing here. We're seeking the truth of what has happened to this man, uh, irregardless of what has been given to us as to what happened, where he went, and the things of that nature. Uh, and and we're gonna hear say justice one more time. To the McGee family, please know that Henderson Moore is with you and we will stand by your side as you seek answers and again, justice for your beloved son. Once again, people don't seek justice unless they've been doing done wrong. You know, just all of the police uh, involved on alivements that have been happening. That is the calling card. Justice for such and such. Justice for Sonya Masses, justice for Breonna Taylor, 
justice for Mike Brown, justice for Ahmaud Arbery, justice for uh, so many people. Like, we can go on and on. I'm not going to believe you with those. Um, but this is somewhat um, indicative of the mayor's knowledge of maybe, yeah, justice needs to be sought in this situation because if it was no foul play and, you know, suspected of, you know, self-harm, then there would be no need for justice. But uh, she ends the letter by saying, as we gather in collective mourning, I am reminded of Psalms 34 and 18, which says, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. May Javion's find, family find comfort in this time of unimaginable pain. And may our community stand united in pursuit of truth, healing, and peace. And I want to place the emphasis on truth. And um, it seems like the mayor, according to this statement, if it was written by her and not a, you know, a PR generated statement, which, you know, a lot of them are, uh, she definitely seems like a woman of faith, of, of genuine concern and uh a seeker of justice and so contrary to um uh, my man sheriff and as i put in the uh sheriff uh uncle curtis uncle ruckus brain uh his interview does not seem so well put together uh, he seems once again nervous he seems unable to make eye contact with the reporter when he's talking about difficult conversations. He seems to be contradictory, uh, but he seems to be very, very, very um, adamant of the situation not being like the things that happened in the 60s. And I won't say the L word because they've been kind of restrictive on my videos um, the closer, I guess, we get to uh, the truth. But I want you guys to see this video here. And here is the video from, from Sheriff Brame's initial interview. This is the full video. You know, walk me through what we know, the timetable of, of when he was found and, and what we know so far. Good morning, yes. Uh, this is Sheriff Curtis Brame here in Vance County. On Wednesday, September 11th, approximately... Um, 10.08 a.m. Vance County Sheriff's Office received a call out to a rural part of the community, Vanco Mill Road, 285 Vanco Mill Road, where a deceased young man was sitting up against a tree, with his back up against a tree. He had a rope around his neck and he had, the top of the rope was up in the tree limb. Um, there was not a noose, there was not a knot in the rope. Um, we have information that we got that this young man was visited a local Walmart um, store here in Henderson where he purchased an item that it was possible to use around his neck. Uh, we're still, it's an open investigation at this time. Uh, we, we, we're following all the resources and avenue. We're utilizing, uh, we found out he was- So, a um, as you see Sheriff Brain, you know, right there, he, you know, that the guy asked him for a timeline. And he immediately goes in to say, okay, well, yeah, he was, you know, we, we received the call. You know, he's looking down like he's been, he's trying to remember what he's been told to say, in my opinion. Uh, a lot of the times you'll see his eyes darting back and forth uh, away from the person he's talking to, uh, especially when he talks about, you know, um, the rope being, you know, found and how it was found. And, uh, you know, and, and, and he, he, he was very careful to say, you know, he purchased the rope that was used, used on him. You know, he said that. So he, he, he he's trying to stay ambiguous, meaning, okay, well, I'm not saying that it was, you know, self-inflicted, but I'm also not saying that it was someone else. He's trying to stay very ambiguous with his words, uh, which is evident to me. Uh, but he definitely looks shaky, nervous, and unable to uh, keep the guy in, uh, keep his eyes on the guy. 
We found out he was a truck driver after we identified who he was. At first, we had no identity on him because he had no ID on him. And once we identified who he was, we found that his, the tractor trailer that he was driving was in an adjacent lot to from where his body was located. Um, so at, we contacted his family in Aurora, uh, Illinois. Um, we had the Aurora Police Department to go out and contact his family. And once that notification was made, we um, personally talked to my investigators, talked to the family, and, and, and informed them of the information that and the, and the ongoing investigation uh, the, or the death investigation of th their son, that 21 year old son, uh, Mr. Magby. Okay, so you, you heard him, you know, he kind of stuttered through that. Um, you know, he said, well, we didn't have any ID because we didn't know who he was and his truck was parked on an adjacent lot. And, you know, he, 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 well, we informed them and my authorities, we called up there, we informed them of, you know, the death of the 21 year old son, uh, Mr. Magby. You know, he he doesn't even know the guy's name. You know, that's how involved, you know, he has been. And actually, you will see it because, once again, he, he contradicts himself later by saying, okay, uh, I didn't really pay any attention to, to the scene. So, once again, you're the sheriff. Something like that happened in your county. You know, you definitely should be paying more attention. But let's, let's um, get to this interview a little bit further. And so at this point, I mean, you, I mean, you sure you've seen some of these videos from family members that have out there sort of, you know, questioning whether there could be foul play involved. You know, what's your response to that? Um, I understand the loss. Uh, I feel uh, gratitude, uh, condolences, not gratitude, but condolences go out to the family. So you see, that's 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 one of those nervous mistakes. I feel gratitude. Like, what? how are you going to feel gratitude when somebody lost? You know their their love, but he did catch himself. But I just had to stop it real quick right there. But let's continue. Uh, I never lost a child to the mother and to their loved ones. Uh, I, I never walked in their shoes. But I asked them to slow down, to pump their brakes, to slow that train down that's left the station about the Vance County Sheriff Office, and definitely want to clear that the Henderson Police Department has nothing to do with this investigation whatsoever. This incident is clearly out in the county under the jurisdiction of the sheriff, which is myself and my, my uh, deputies and investigators. Uh, we invited the North Carolina Highway Patrol, uh, correction, the North Carolina SBI to assist us in the investigation regarding perceptions and, and, and get clarity and to be transparent that the Vance County Sheriff Department is not withholding anything and sharing information regarding to the descendant to, to the family. You know, once again, he's kind of he's kind of stuttering uh, over that part as well. Um, you know, said he called uh, Highway Patrol. I mean, I meant the State Bureau of Investigation in. Um, to, to help, you know, he wants everybody to slow down, saying that they're not being transparent. But of course, you know, we've known that we, we've, we've, we've got information that they did not let the family see the body. And you, you, you hear him talk about pictures later, you know, pictures, um, which his, his, his interpretation of the pictures contradict information that we've received, um, about, you know, the, the condition of Mr. McGee. And here's he, he asked him about the autopsy. So let's let's see what he has to say about the autopsy. The is, is there an autopsy yet? An autopsy is being performed today, yes. Okay. And uh, also, you know, with regard to... Okay. And uh, also, you know, with regard to, you know, the rope maybe possibly being bought at Walmart, is that you, would you be able to release that surveillance video? Uh, once we compile the information that we have, uh, step by step, uh, talking to the district attorney, the local district attorney, and the SBI, we don't want to release too much information too soon because this is an ongoing investigation. So you see, when the guy asked them about the the the, the rope being bought at Walmart and where you released that information, he actually started smiling. He was he was like, "Yeah, we're going to release that because that's our way out," you know. And and I want to pause here because. When he was first found, everyone who knew the condition he was found in was thinking foul play, right? But as soon as they released that video at Walmart, I got friends who I don't know how bright they are. I thought they was bright who said, oh, yeah, he did it because he bought the rope. You have to understand you have to be careful of that play because that is the only thing they, they've, they've released. And I've talked to many truckers that said, you know, truckers use ropes to work out, to, to tie the doors out on their, on, on their trucks. 
so many things. And, you know, I've received information that he was working out with the rope. So, um, but they, they release that because they know people are visual. And so when people see that he bought a rope, so your cognitive mind, your, your, your receptors in your brain is going to automatically, he bought the rope. You know what I'm saying? That's, and how he was found is going to go to that right there. So we have to be careful with those narratives. But, you know, Sheriff Brain, once again, wants everybody to, to be quiet. He's going to go into the spiel about a thousand hits on TikTok here. And we just ask everybody to be patient. And so we can do a thorough investigation to get the proper information out there and ask people to stay off social media and slow down and report the facts. As to, I understand there's over a thousand hits on TikTok. Uh, the sheriff's office not being transparent, not providing information to the family, and that is not true. There's been information put out there that there's a lynching in Vance County. There is not a lynching in Vance County. The young man was not dangling from a tree. He was not swinging from a tree. The rope was wrapped around his neck. It was not a noose. It was not a knot in the rope. So therefore, it was not a lynching here in Vance County. There you go again. See, he, he's adamant about you know what it wasn't right but what was it then you know he's at about okay it wasn't the news it wasn't a knot it wasn't tied around a tree so so what was it you know we've all you know got information that leads to something happening to him elsewhere and him being placed in that manner in that location to sort of to my opinion to kind of send the sign like yeah well, you know we 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 didn't do it, but you know we 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 didn't hang them up. But you know this is this is y'all remember this y'all remember this right? In my opinion, that's what it looks like to me. The sign that they was about to you know that they were smoke signaling. On on the other side of things, do you believe at this point? I cannot without the uh, report the cause of death on the. Uh, um, medical examiner, we're, we're going down every avenue, every aspect, all the information, videos. Uh, we we got in contact with the trucking company uh, to get his GPS meeting of all his whereabouts while he was here in Vance County in the Henderson area. So right now, we don't know exactly the cause of death of this young man. So no, I cannot say it was this time. Uh, okay, and uh, and also on the, on the other side, Newt can't say foul. Uh, you know, how is it being treated? Just as a death investigation? It's been treated in, in to, as a death investigation till we rule it out. Okay. Are there any signs of any foul play? No, sir. Not at this time. No signs of foul play or uh, implication or in anyone else involved at this time. You hear him say, okay, well, no signs of, no signs of foul play. He was adamant about that. Now, when, when, he, when, 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 when he asked him about the S word, you see how he went to babbling. He went to explaining, well, you know, we, uh, well, you know, we went through every investigation. We got the, you know, we called the trucking company to get his whereabouts. And, you know, we got to, you know, this, that, we got to survey the footage. Blah, 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 blah. So, you know, I can't say. But when he said foul play, oh, no, no, no. And there, there's no evidence. How can you be so sure if you're, if you're not so sure about the other thing? If that, if that makes sense. Hopefully I'm making sense to you. But he's so sure that it's no foul play. But when it comes to the S word, it's like, well, you know, we did some check in, some investigation, and, you know, we ran around the tree three times, and you know what I mean? But with the other scenario, it's immediately a no. But watch how he contradicts himself. No, no, what's your message to the family? I mean, obviously, regardless of what this was, I mean, they're thousands of miles away in Chicago. You get news that, you know, your son is found you know, near a tree in the middle of North Carolina. Be patient. Call us 24-7, uh, Vance County Sheriff's Office, 252-738-2200. I'm Sheriff Curtis Brain. Call me or one of my investigators. And with a, any time of day or night, we will come and we will meet you here at the Sheriff's Office. Uh, I'm sorry that the family wasn't awarded that opportunity to view their son or their loved ones. And in a natural circumstance, not a natural circumstance, but in a normal circumstance where someone is um, deceased and, and taken to a local hospital, Hospital, the family uh, are awarded that opportunity to go to the hospital, to the emergency room, or, 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 or either some other form of fashion so they can view, view the body and identify the person. This young man was not disfigured in any form of fashion. 
the picture ID that we took, uh, the picture that we're taking of him was positively you could identify as being your child or identify someone who knew to could identify that picture. So he, once again, he said, well, you know, there were no signs of foul play. The picture we took, you know, they were they were readily identifiable or somebody could identify. Him. So he's basically saying, OK, they, it won't that bad. Basically, he said, like the pictures we took, you know, they they would identify me, you know, somebody who knew him, they could identify him. What is that saying? That that doesn't mean that he won't be him, you know, but, you know, his body, once again, has sat at the coroner's office. And then, you know, he wasn't explaining why the family hadn't seen him yet. Of course, they I don't think they had been down this time at the sign of uh, at the time of the interview. So, um. You know that 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 is a relevant point. I give my brother some grace there, but um, you know he he's definitely um, you know, explaining on on the you know the picture. They oh yeah, we do the picture we took. Or, you know where you know they were they was identifiable. You know they was it's so, somebody who knew him can identify him. They don't, you know. I mean, if Emmett Till mama could identify him, but you know that he, 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 she knew that was her son. You know what I'm saying? By the shape of his head, but she couldn't identify the face, but we can keep talking. Where is he now then? His, his body is at the medical examiner office. has been autopsy. For the, for the autopsy? Yes, sir. And do we know when the results of that are going to come in? Hopefully to today we get a preliminary and, and give us a, a, a better understanding of what happened. And will you, will you release that right away? I, I will share the information with the family first mm -hmm. and then uh, make a decision from the district attorney about sharing it with the press and okay. with the public. Is there anything else that you, you know you mentioned that you've seen out there on social media that you want that you saw that you wanted to address or clear the air about? I do. I just want people to stay out of their room and meals, stick to the facts, let, allow us to do our job and be patient and, and, you know, and stop saying that the sheriff is not being transparent or that the sheriff is not doing what he's supposed to do. I'm very clear in my duties and my responsibilities and my obligations to the citizens of Vance County in the state of North Carolina. And he was supposed to be. He, he got to learn how to say it's supposed. I got a friend who says supposed to be all the time, too, but it's supposed to. Suppose, and my friend, I know she watching. You guys stop saying suppose too. You sound like Sheriff Brain, but um, you know, he once again, he just he if you if you listen to him, well, we decided we 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 release that information according to the DA office, right? That's that's who runs things. The district attorney and the judge. Sadly, these small towns, the sheriff once again, he's a figurehead. You know, so well, as he mentioned, well, you know, I I, I decided to release that information on. Uh, you know, when I get permission from the DA, that's what he basically said. You know what I'm saying? So the DA has given him permission to release the information about, you know, the Walmart video, which shows the rope. But he, the DA ain't gave him no more permission to release anything else. So um, that that's what we have here. But listen to this last part right here. And shout out to that interviewer, too, because he's really pressing Sheriff right now. He's pressing him. And, and, and I think the interview knows you know what I'm saying? It's 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 horse manure. You know what I'm saying? Well, let's keep going. And keep, do you know who found him or what the circumstances of the call coming in were? I have not released that information this time, sir. Okay. Uh, the call came in through 911, so therefore it's, it's recorded and we'll be able to trace that back, sir. Uh, do you, so we can't say who who came up came upon him? Not at this time. Just part of the ongoing investigation. Gotcha. Um, do we know you know the last people who were in contact with him or kind of anything leading up to this? No, sir. We do not. Uh, other than uh, apparently being at Walmart distribution. Okay. And I mean, I, I'm sorry, Walmart store. Okay. And his his truck. How how far was he from where his truck was parked? Oh, I said 30, 30 yards, 30, 40 yards from where his truck. The, uh, his truck was in a fenced-in area, and he was on the outside of the fenced-in area where a tree was at. And you said he was just sitting up against the tree? Sit with his back up against the tree. Okay, and the rope was just around his neck? Yes, sir. Was it tight? Was it I did not pay any attention personally. I cannot uh, comment on that. Um, okay. other... All right, so, 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 you hear him say, okay, well, he was sitting up with his back uh, against the tree. Uh, and and my brother, I don't know who the, the interviewer was, but he was on Sheriff Brain Bumper. He was like, yo. It was it was a rotate? Oh, I don't I don't know. I didn't pay attention to any of that. So how can you be so sure two minutes earlier that there's no signs of foul play? If you didn't so so if this makes sense to anybody but me, how can he be so sure that there's no signs of foul play? 
you know, when he clearly says, well, I, I didn't pay that much attention to it. He's been given a narrative, folks. Let's let's be honest. He's been given. He, they told that man what to say. And like I said, I don't know if, they, if it's true. You heard the video last night of somebody saying that somebody put hands and feet on him. So um, we we we, we gonna see. So what else he got to say in these last fourteen seconds? Um, any other, uh, you know, anything else on his body? Bru you know, bruises, anything like that? No, no sir. Okay. No. Um, anything else you wanted to uh, add or that I forgot to ask? Once again, the guy says, and we're going to let him, the interview right here goes only like eight seconds. But he says, any bruises, anything on his body? No, sir. Quickly. But you literally just said you didn't pay attention that closely. So you got to analyze these interviews to the T, man, because the truth is going to come out. You know, he's been given a narrative to say. When, it, when, it, when he asked him about the S word, Oh no! Well, you know what? Uh, we, you know, we're checking all leads. Um, you know, we're 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 checking the footage. You know, we're doing an investigation. So, you know, I, I wouldn't rule anything out, right? But when foul play is mentioned, oh no, 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 no foul play. You know, no, nobody else involved. How can you be so sure when just ten seconds ago you were saying, well, we can't rule anything out, right? You can't rule anything out except somebody else being involved. But, you know, I just wanted to, to, to yeah, and I don't know if y'all seen that letter yet. Today was my first time seeing that letter. It's obvious in that letter that the mayor and the police department are really, you know, was, was trying to say, look, this ain't our jurisdiction. We and, and shout out once again to the mayor, Melissa Elliott, if she because she's kept she's saying what we want her to say without saying it. She kept saying, we're going to seek justice, justice for his family. We're going to walk with them in search of justice. If this is like he's saying there's no foul play, right? He, he literally heard him say that. Why would we need justice? So um, I think I think, I think God for my sister, you know, if, if, if she did intend to, to bring that narrative, you know, for someone like me who's going to look in everything that, that, you know, dissect every nook and cranny of the conversation. Uh, and I think I think that person who sent it to me as well, they're gonna don't be mad at me, because I like I'm going it's it's I probably received 30 35 text messages already today and seven emails. So I you know I mean I'll be here all day looking for that. But uh, I appreciate y'all you for sending it but also I appreciate y'all for once again helping to get you know, to the bottom of this, you know, because um, we are to seek justice. God's the God, God of righteousness and justice. And I'm going to leave y'all with another scripture. Um, and that's from the book of Amos as well. You heard the first scripture says, Amos 5 and 24 says, let justice roll down like a mighty, might, might, water, might. let justice roll down like waters and righteousness, like an ever-flowing stream. Why do we have to have that, right? I'm going to give you some more scriptures, right? Because this speaks of, the first part of Amos speaks of those who pervert justice. Let's look at verse Six. No, let's look at verse seven. Verse seven says, O oh, you who turn justice to wormwood and cast down righteousness to the earth. Justice to wormwood, justice to nothing, they, and cast down righteousness to the earth. They're not seeking it. They're destroying justice and righteousness, right? And there's a couple of more scriptures. Verse 12, verse 12 says, for I know how many are your transgressions and how great are your sins. You who afflict the righteous who take a bribe 
and turn aside the needy in the gate. And in response to this, verse 15 says, hate evil and love good and establish justice in the gate. We want to establish justice in the gate in the city of Henderson regarding this case. So I think, um, you know, everyone who tunes in and share this broadcast, keeping this, um, you know, this matter before the public. I think, you know, all of you guys who are sharing the video in a positive manner. Um, and, you know, and, and dissecting the information that they receive, disseminating. I got some more information. This is going to be um, a, a, a it's going to be tough. Um, everybody have seen the picture of the three guys. So somebody has possibly identified one of the guys that is in the picture who is possibly a Franklinton County Sheriff. And I'm going to let you guys be the judge of the information. But um, peace and blessings once again, prayers and condolences um, to the McGee family. As the scripture says, blessed are those that mourn for they shall be comforted. So all of us here involved, we pray for your comfort. We pray for your uh, peace. We pray for your strength in this time of bereavement. You know, the funeral is coming up in about uh, four, four days in which uh, the young man will be laid to rest on his birthday. So um, that is that that is such a a, a a a travesty. And, you know, if things continue to unfold as we have been unfolding them or as God has been unfolding them, then, you know, we 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 it would it would be an equal travesty if, you know, what people are thinking happen, uh, happen. But nevertheless, 919-587-7782 or you can email me at taylorpublishinghouse at gmail.com uh, peace and blessings y'all stay tuned uh, for, for the live later on tonight uh, we'll, be, we'll be touching on some other aspects of uh, the case once again I thank y'all for tuning in if y'all do want to bless me and thank, thank you for everyone who has been blessing me with the cash apps uh, you can cash app me at dollar sign rich money seven 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 the picture that you'll see up there will be me in front of about four or four of the books i've written so um, I, I definitely appreciate it appreciate you and I'm, I'm grateful for you know your generosity and your kind felt uh contributions uh to help this channel maintain and grow but nevertheless peace and love i'm out god bless from local stories to Wayne County news, get ready to dive into everything happening in North Carolina with Taylor House Publishing. Got a story to share? Shoot us an email at taylorpublishinghouse at gmail.com. If you're looking to publish your book or need some top-notch mentorship, we've got your back. Join the excitement with the one and only Richard Taylor right here at Taylor House Publishing. Speak with Richard directly at 919-587-7782. Don't forget to smash that like button, hit subscribe, and invite your family and friends to watch. From Lake County to the Carolina Coast, Taylor House, bring the news you love most. Tune in on YouTube, don't miss a beat. Local stories that keep you with your Taylor House, we've got the school. Thank <laughs> you.